Next tonight, we speak to the brother of a woman who died when trainee paramedics were sent to help her. Sarah Malenga's neighbour called an ambulance to her home in Barking when she collapsed two years ago. Two student paramedics arrived, but the coroner later concluded there was a gross failure to provide basic medical attention and she died from natural causes contributed to by neglect. The 21-year-old, who suffered from sickle cell disease, died later that day. The London Ambulance Service say the crew are no longer working for them. I'd like to start on behalf of the London Ambulance Service in apologising to the family of Sarah for the poor level of service that we delivered on that day. This was in no way related to cuts, it was related to poor care delivered by two staff who do no longer work for the London Ambulance Service. And I'd like to reassure the people of London that we do provide a good, safe and effective service to the thousands of people who do call us every day. Sarah's brother is Chongo Malenga, the family's lawyer is Karen Hayes, I'm pleased to say they join me now. Chongo, if I can start with you, did you get any reassurance from what you just heard from the London Ambulance Service there? Well, I'm hoping the reassurance uh, turns into action and that it will never happen again. I mean, we've suffered quite, you know, tragic loss and by the circumstances it all happened. It was really sad and I hope, you know, everything's put into action. You lost your sister two years ago. Over that period, when did you first learn that the people that had been sent to help her were actually unqualified, they were trainees? The same night she passed, actually. And that's the same night when we initially started complaining about the treatment she had received with the landlord who was uh, present at that time throughout the whole um, ordeal. Um, so from that point, London Ambulance, we sat together and went through their serious investigation and came to light that Obviously, there were two trainee paramedics. And okay. devastating detail that yeah. the students that were sent there, yeah. they'd actually failed some of their exams. Yeah, I mean, that came in light uh, during the inquest um, when it was all being heard. We never knew that they'd failed their exams at that point. But we still raised our concerns at that point that why did they send two trainee paramedics to attend uh, to such a case, really? Karen, people, I'm sure, will find it astonishing that you call 999 mm. in your darkest hour. It's a terrifying experience to make that call. And you, you trust the people that come out to you. Yes, I mean, the, the, the problem here is that you are going to have to send training paramedics because they're doing training through, a, they go through a whole process of with training. supervision. Exactly. The question here was why they weren't sent with someone who was qualified. So it wasn't two trainees who had both failed a section of their their training therefore you have to ask how many times had they gone out before these individuals and not done basic checks which is what happened here they, they didn't do fundamental core checks for signs of, of systemic illness and it took someone dying to realize that they weren't doing what they should do and my worry is that they're not being they weren't being supervised properly and I have to ask from the evidence that was heard at the inquest whether that was because there wasn't enough people mm. to affect that, that training and to, to give that supervision. And I do think the ambulance service give a fantastic service. Not when we, both of us were agreed that you, we're not tarring the whole ambulance service with, what, with, with the generalised criticism, but this is no deaths acceptable. They said it wasn't down to cuts, as I said, we're also learning that in some cases we've got nurses acting in, in the place of GPs on, on call services. Yes. Well, we, we, we do see a lot of that. And again, there's absolutely no reason why some, some medical services can't be performed by nurses. And a lot of nurses are going on face specialist courses, but, but they've you, got you, to be trained. Again, if you're, if you're using an out-of-hours service, mm. you're in an hour of need. Yeah. You're calling a doctor. You're going to see a doctor. Mm. And you're getting a nurse. Absolutely. And there are times when you need it to be a doctor who's got full in-depth knowledge of medicine, who can make the right judgment call. And we do see, unfortunately, rather a lot of out-of-hours cases come across our desks. I must, I must say, NHS England told us today that uh, sometimes senior nurses are on call for GPs, but they say nurses can reach a GP for guidance via email, mm. via telephone, if they need to. Do you think now the Health Secretary has said that they, 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 he kind of supports whistleblowers in the NHS, more cases will come out like this? I'm not sure that it will. 
Um, there was a lot of evidence heard at the Mid Staffordshire public inquiry about the effectiveness of whistleblowing and it was quite clear that the whistleblowing service wasn't being used because medical um, the NHS staff are frightened of speaking out even when they whistleblow. And Chongo, just to conclude your fight for Sarah, that goes on now? It still goes on. Um, we hope we get to the bottom of this and that it never happens to anyone again. And really. a legal fight for you from here. Thank you both for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. London.